friends, our speaker this morning, with his usual wit and charm, oh, yeah. is here to share with us <laughs> the instructions and preparations for setting our goals for this new year. We ask you now to help me welcome to the podium our pastor, our spiritual leader, our beloved Reverend John Scott for the rest of this morning's service. Happy New Year, family. <laughs> Happy New you. <laughs> uh, and I have to say that one of my temple teens grown into lots of man. Kyle's church is worshiping with us this morning, along with his Auntie Marguerite from Canada. Stella, make them see how you look good, boy. <laughs> Captain of the Ryerson Rams. And he's available. Yeah, um, where are my teenage girls? <laughs> for football coaching. <laughs> so happy, happy new year, and for all those beautiful souls who are energetically in tune with our celebration this morning, either by being present here in sun-drenched, warm Jamaica, or joining us on the World Wide Web, happy new year. I know for each of you and for yours, a new year that is God-graced and values-based. Let us affirm together, in 2017, my life is God-graced and values-based. In 2017, my life is God-graced and values-based. Fenwick Holmes, brother of religious science founder Dr. Ernest Holmes, tells the story of a man who was cast ashore on an island. The storm had dashed him up unhurt across the breakers into a lagoon. Behind him was a high cliff which he was unable to climb. Quote, at first I made desperate efforts to escape, he said, but finally reconciled myself to slow death by thirst and starvation. I believe that I was the only person on the island and that rescue was not only unlikely, but quite impossible. I did not know that beyond the cliff there was a snug harbor where natives were engaged in pearl fishing. I believed myself to be alone and was possessed by an indescribable terror as death came toward me. I thought of my mother and wished I had been kinder to her before her death. I regretted that I had not lived a more generous life. And then suddenly I felt impelled to pray. Funny how when you're up against the wall, eh? At the last minute, as Reverend Tommy used to say, when everything, all other avenues are exhausted and you say, boy, we have to pray. We said, Lord, it come to that. <laughs> mm. So he suddenly felt this urge to pray, and he hadn't done so for many years. Thank God we in this, in this church know the power of prayer. And suddenly he said he felt this, this feeling came over him of, of calm. And it seemed as if, although it was trivial and unworthy, his prayer, he was mentally just ready for whatever came. He surrendered. And in that moment, he mentally asked for forgiveness. This is very key, friends, because forgiveness is the big frog in achieving our goals. A lot of us are blocked from achieving what we really want and desire because in our hearts, we have not found it possible to let go of old hurts and old unforgivenesses that keep us chained to the past and unable to move forward. And so he says, and I quote, it was at this point that I became unaccountably calm. My mind became very sharp and I opened my eyes. And it was then that I saw a tiny cleft in the cliff above me, which ran diagonally across the rock and ended on a shelf within reach of an agile man. I had missed it before in my crazed effort to escape because I had been too close to the wall, and it gave me new hope. I felt sure I could work my way upward if I could regain enough strength. The shipwrecked man said that even in that tense moment, he felt that in some way this means of escape had been shown him because he had made a new man of himself through praying. Quote, I had been hypnotized by the feeling of guilt and fear. I now seemed to be awake and had a sense of 
of, of lightness. The relief was so great that I must say I laughed out loud. And had anybody seen or heard me at that moment, they would have thought the lightness came out of my head instead of out of my heart, unquote. And you know, friends, I dare say that none of us have been shipwrecked, but many of us have indeed felt up against the wall sometimes in our lives, haven't we? And this, you just can't, you just can't figure a way out. And when we are up against those cliffs and those challenges, sometimes we are moved to pray. Too often, though, we give in to the fear and despair, and it is only when we feel that we're facing certain death, in inverted commas, that we think to pick up the phone, ask one of our practitioners or our ministers to pray with us. How easily we forget that we have inner resources which can be drawn upon by faith, hope, and prayer. Ours and the prayers of others. And yet when we do remember, friends, to draw on that inner presence, we find we can triumph over anything. It is in this state that the runner gets a second wind, and even the most timid person performs deeds of heroism. It is as though for a moment we awaken from the belief in our weakness into the realization that with God we are strong and that all things are possible. A famous runner once said, my muscles are rubber, so I run with my mind. Psychologists know that our adrenal glands play an important part in courageous effort. They stimulate all the organs of action. Adrenaline rushes through the blood and washes the dross of effort from the muscles and removes the friction of weariness, which impedes our agility. It is at these times that new strength returns and we feel as alive and rested as though we had had a good sleep and that we can do anything. We are truly awesomely and fearsomely made. So when we think we can, we can. All things are possible to him who believeth. Isaiah 40, 31 tells us, and I quote, he giveth strength to the weary, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And wherever you see that word Lord in the Bible, you can, tra you can substitute the word law because the law is the way the Lord works. So that they that wait upon the law, that rely upon that absolutely perfect law of mind, shall renew their strength and shall mount up with wings like eagles. And so if you believe you are a child of God and that God is life, then it follows that you possess the unlimited life of God. Esther and Jerry Hicks in a fascinating book, which has been out for some time, titled Ask and It Is Given, which presents the teachings of the non-physical entity Abraham, describe this process of aligning with the God presence and power within us as allowing. Wow, well, if you could just love God. You know, just love God. Let go and love God, no? Can we just say, I let go and love God? I let go and love God. And so this allowing deliberately focuses your attention upon things that cause you to offer a vibration that allows you to connect to that God source that is within you. And this means that when we feel off center or out of sorts, it is a wake up call to realign ourselves with what Esther and Jerry Hicks called source energy. That's, that's the source within you, that from which all the strength, all the energy, all the determination, all the power that is yours by divine right of being as a child of God, and that was given to you when you were created, that energy is available to you. You just have to let go and love God. And so friends, it is absolutely necessary to know this as you set your goals for this year. All the life there is is in you right now. You don't have to wait for anything. You don't have to ask for anything more than the knowing that all the life there is, is yours. And so in preparation for tomorrow's goal setting workshop, I want you to take a look back over 2016 and without judging yourself or others, take stock of 
who you were being and how you were living your life in the year just gone. And to help you, I've included a flyer in your program. Um, you, you'll see it says, I think it's called A Look Back at 2016. It's by um, Science of Mind, uh, Religious Science Minister, Dr. David Alt. Alt focuses on 11 habits which you might want to work at strengthening this year. They are loving, forgiving, stopping to listen within, taking leaps of faith, which he calls adventures, seeking wellness by honoring your body temple, playing, goal setting, learning, cleaning up relationships, sharing of yourself, your time, your talent, your treasure, and finally, praying before you find yourself up against the cliff. So let's take a look at them together. I'll read the lead question, and then we can read the amplification together. Did I express love this year, real love together? The kind of love that doesn't announce itself in flashy circumstance or structured conditions, but an authentic, quiet, internal love? The kind of love that bubbles to the surface when I gaze at another with understanding. A love that places me in their shoes, granting freedom from judgment and deepening my compassion. A philanthropic love that expresses because it simply feels compelled to, because it knows there is more than enough and everyone can benefit. If not, then I resolve to be and do better in my authentic loving. Here's a big frog. Did I forgive this year? Really forgive together. The kind of forgiveness that cracks open my heart, peeling away one more layer of righteous indignation, thus allowing my soul to breathe. The kind of forgiveness that loosens my clenched fists, held high at a situation so that I don't enter into the next one with guarded mistrust. The kind of forgiveness that comprehends there is a difference between understanding a behavioral choice and condoning it. If not, then I resolve to be and do better in my forgiving. Did I stop this year? Really stop. The kind of stopping that can't help but make me vulnerable by becoming more familiar with who I am without distraction, smoke screens, excuses, or self-imposed numbing. The kind of stopping that turns me naked towards my feelings, giving them permission to express no right or wrong, a stopping that simply lets me hear what I need to hear so that I can live more effectively, if not, then I resolve to be and do better in allowing myself to stop. Did I seek adventure this year, real adventure? The kind of adventure that requires me to not only take a leap of faith off my cliff of familiarity, but actually sends me back to get a running start. The kind of adventure that shakes the dust off my but underused wings and gives them an opportunity to catch the gorgeous wind of change, the kind of adventure that knows there is no outside safety net in this physical world, only an internal one, the kind of adventure that shouts, I choose to live fully. If not, then I resolve to be and do better in seeking adventure. Did I seek wellness this year? Real wellness. The kind of wellness that requires me to be fully conscious of what I put into my body. The kind of wellness that requires me to practice what I preach when it comes to self-love, while understanding that the power to dissolve poor habits starts by simply choosing to change. Wellness that says, this is the only body you've got. Treat me with respect. Praise me daily and honor me as the holy temple that I am. If not, then I resolve to be and do better in allowing my wellness in my life. Did I play this year? 
really play. The kind of play that gives value to the heavenly activity of fun, knowing that fun is sacred, that play is the equivalent of work, and that during play, renewal and relaxation usher in the newest ideas and the clearest choices for better manifestations? Did I view play as a necessary life function and not a debatable luxury? If not, then I resolve to be and do better in my relationship to playing. As we say in Jamaica, I, I resolve to romp more. <laughs> Did I set a goal and seek to completion this year, really complete it? The kind of completion that lets the vibration of satisfaction and confidence in my abilities heal any opposing ideas of not being good enough? Did I honor my life and its sacred purpose by utilizing my time with forward thinking and letting my mistakes be motivations, not antagonists? Did I dissolve my insecurities and procrastination by understanding that my untapped genius has but one mode of expression, and that is through idea, thought, word, and action? If not, then I resolve to be and do better in setting and completing my goals. Did I open myself up to learn this year, really learn? The kind of learning that entices me to enroll in being student of life. My potential, letting divine intellect eat from my plate and stepping deeper into the waters of wisdom. Did I open a book, take a class, study a language, learn an instrument, write a poem, visit another culture? Did I learn to surprise and thrill myself with the infinite capacity I have to master more than I thought I could? If not, then I resolve to be and do better on my personal path of learning. Here the one know. <laughs> Did I clean up my relationships this year? Really clean them up. The kind of cleaning that requires me to break open the lock pull back the curtain, throw open the window, and start removing the dust of harsh words, grudges, false accusations, and misguided choices that have layered my heart? Did I make amends for the fearful ways that disheartened another, for neglecting to honor their point of view? With careful examination, did I communicate my truth, understanding that sometimes all we may be able to do is agree to disagree, and to do so without judgment or malice. If not, then I resolve to be and do better on cleaning up my relationships. Did I share my good this year? Really share. The kind of sharing that comes from the pure joy, another. Not from what I think they can or will do for me in return, did I tithe back to where I was spiritually fed, transformed and inspired? Did I practice random acts of kindness and give my time, talent and treasure, realizing that my good is a part of a never ending wellspring that cannot run dry, whose source is and always will be the infinite wellspring of the divine? Did I commit to walking the altruistic path remembering that every step brings healing and enlightenment to the world? If not, then I resolve to be and do better in my sharing. Did I pray this year? Really pray. The kind of prayer that is spoken not to God, but as God. Prayers that affirm rather than beseech are pregnant with knowing rather than bloated with doubt? Did I make my everyday activities a prayer, realizing that every thought I think carries with it the responsibility of an effect on the world? Did I remember how truly powerful my own prayer actually is, and that by simply devoting myself to the practice of it, I become the change? 
Did I remember that my prayer takes what I seek and introduces it to me, the seeker? If not, then I resolve to be and do better with prayer. And then my friends, Alt ends by asking, did I do all these things because deep down inside I fully understand how precious I am and that each of these sacred practices reminds me how I am held in the light as a perfect idea? Did I remember that I have been perfectly conceived and am always held in the perfect mind of God as perfect being? Did I know that here is nothing that I, there is nothing that I can ever say, nothing I can ever do that will separate me from the love of God? If for any reason I forgot, I say this together. If for any reason I forgot my divinity this year, then I resolve to be and do better in my knowing of it, to fully understand and embody the truth that it is done unto me as I believe. And I believe in the power of good for me, for you, for all. Say to your neighbor, I believe in the power of good for me, for you, for all. I believe in the power of good for me, for you, and for all. And so your assignment. And you don't have a, any choice but to undertake this. I'm not giving you any choice. Your assignment is to go over this checklist again this evening and rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being low and 10 being high. And for those areas where you can see that there is a need for improvement, make a list of habits, beliefs, and thoughts that hinder your progress or that are not in alignment with your values. I want you to head that list, no longer welcome, top of the page, no longer welcome, and write down anything that is hindering your progress, your awakening to your spiritual magnificence. No, write down nobody's name. <laughs> it is not about somebody else. It is about you. You and your spiritual growth. You and your unfoldment. You and your awakening to all that God intended you to be and doing it in this new year of your life. Let us affirm, in, in 2017, my life is God-graced and values-based. In 2017, my life is God-graced and values-based. And so, my friends, when you face some challenging task, say this, my life is God-graced and values-based, so that all of your actions are in alignment with the values that you embrace as a son or daughter of the living Spirit Almighty. And this list from David Alt is a pretty comprehensive list. There are others that you might want to add, but work with this list and make your, your list of, what, what am I calling it? No longer. no longer wanted and bring it tomorrow evening because we're going to take it from you and burn it. No longer welcome. I began with a story by Fenwick Holmes. And so I would like to conclude with one of his poems. It is titled, Life is All. Life weaves the petal of the rose whose heart is opened as it grows. And from it, scented sweetness flows. Yet we must breathe and be aware of perfume hovering in the air, or else for us, it is not there. Awake, my soul, from thoughts of strife, from fears as cutting as a knife. Become again aware of life. Deny the claim of him who saith that life is swallowed up by death, and breathe God's life with every breath. Yes, friends, this year, breathe God's life with every breath. For your life and God's life are one life. The beautiful Jesus said, and I quote, I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. And it is because we are all part of this one, this one life of God, that a practitioner of this science, and all of you are practitioners. Some of us are licensed and trained in the science and art of, of spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer, but all of us who practice the science of mind are, in effect, practitioners of this teaching. So know 
that there is support here for you by those who are trained and licensed. And the second part of your assignment is to look at page eight of your program, select a practitioner for this year and ask them to prayerfully work with you on the achievement of your goals. Work with a practitioner this year to get that support that sometimes when you reach that face of that cliff, somebody who isn't up against it can know for you the magnificent truth that you are really beloved of the Father and deserving of all that you, you require and that you desire. And so now, my friends, unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, unto that living spirit be the glory. May your life this year be God-graced and values-based. Namaste. Namaste.